Infotech Advisory is a multidisciplinary integrated company. We provide essentially advisory and training services to the built environment. Um, we do, we've been doing that for the last 20 years, since, since the year 2000. Um, and my position therein is the, I'm the head of the professional services and the occupational health department at Afrotech. Well, the big concern we have is obviously of late, we've noticed a lot of COVID-19 fatigue. Um, people have got COVID-19 fatigue due to suffering through such a long lockdown, social distancing, isolation, sanitizing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure all of us are very well aware of. And the problem is it's obviously very important to remain vigilant. We, we can't afford to think that life and business can resume to the way it was before the virus. Um, our other big concern is we're finding in the in when we're doing our, our OHS audits for various companies is that companies are typically taking shortcuts um, they're only sanitizing for instance uh, high high traffic areas such as boardroom tables and chairs with they neglect, neglecting other areas which I think is very important as well such as handles um, lift buttons staircase banisters telephone and the like um, another thing which, I, which doesn't only see in the workplace, I see it all around as well, is the improper wearing of masks. I mean, how often do you see people covering their mouths and not their noses, which is not acceptable. And uh, obviously in forgetting to sanitize their hand and also not enforcing adequate social distancing. I think the government is doing the best that they can do. Obviously, they've got this COVID-19 vaccines that have safely arrived in the country, and the vaccination program is beginning to rapidly gain momentum. They've had a few teething problems, and they still have a few teething problems, but I think they're doing it to the best of their ability. Um, the big concern we have from government side is that we've essentially moved through the second wave, but we still record, I think, it's about 1,500 new cases per day and about 200 deaths per day. And we've got something in excess of 50,000 people that have succumbed to the virus. And the, the experts are, are considering or, or think there's going to be a third wave at the end of April. So essentially at the end of this Easter period. And I predict a fourth wave will hit the country when winter arrives. So from a government perspective, they're extremely careful and, and not get lax as well about this. It's a cash 22 because obviously people don't want to go back into, into some form of lockdown again. Um, as far as the workplace is concerned. Um, we, we have picked up and the decision makers, they, they seem to sacrifice profit over the COVID-19 aspects and try to save money by, by typically, <clears throat> excuse me, by typically appointing unaccredited and uncertified service providers to do deep cleaning and sanitizing of the building. And possibly in, on one or two occasions, uh, uh, purchasing inferior quality clean materials and other PPE. Um, it should be, there should be a zero tolerance level to this. Um, from a, I think also it'll take several months for the vaccine program to be rolled out. And uh, I think only once majority of our workforce has been vaccinated, can we kind of consider ourselves to be relatively safe. The other, the other area from a, from a worker's perspective, we pick up big problems is in construction companies. Uh, the, the construction work we do we find that the contractors face harsh penalties and high fines when their projects run late. So there's pressure on them and pressure on the teams and pressure on the workers. And many workers we find a uh, fear that they might lose their job should they, be, they call in ill. And uh, also we find then they fail to disclose a symptom to their supervisors and, and that's a high risk area. Our OHS officers are continually putting pressure on them to the extent that OHS officers or safety officers are not very well liked on site. They obviously got pressure and they have to meet their deadlines and it's a, it's a cash 22 situation, but I don't think the COVID-19 uh, 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 following the, the protocols correctly should be, should be offset for, for the urgency and the, and the potential losses that they could make due to penalties and whatnot. Big risk, as I'm sure is common knowledge now, is the frontline health workers. Um, but I, I, that's not my my area of expertise. But uh, we're finding that also in our facility, in our facility management aspect of Afrotech Advisory, that we find the OHS offers tend to agree that the laborers that are working there are also not wearing their masks on site and they're working in very close proximity 
we also find that they transport together in large numbers and once again not following the, the distance protocols. What we've been doing is actually doing COVID-19 compliance at companies' premises. And as mentioned earlier, we picked up the, the problems we picked up in our reporting saying so they need to adhere to these safety prote protocols to make sure that everyone site, on site or in the work premises are not put at risk. But um, yeah, the, 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 the unaccredited persons they use for deep sanitizing is a big problem that we see. Um, and the, the not facing, the not doing the protocols of sanitizing the, the areas they don't believe to be high risk areas, that's very prevalent from what we've picked up as well. Paradoxically, it tends to be the companies that have until now been largely unaffected by COVID that are the, the greatest risk of succumbing to, to COVID-19 complacency. It's very difficult in the construction industry because they have to be on site, but most certainly we would recommend working from home where at all possible. Um, and, or, and or a mixture of both if that's not possible. But certainly it's not, it's not worth coming to the, into the office space. I mean, even so, we have a division called DSP, Design Spatial Planning, which are very busy trying to reallocate or redesign the workplace environment for such companies, obviously maintaining the 1.5 meter distance between employees, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're working in a closed environment with air conditioners, et cetera, it's not a very healthy environment.